Um, Dave, do you, do you mind just giving us an opening statement around uh, Quaid or, or what's happened there exactly? Uh, yeah, so he's he's unavailable to tour. And, and were you informed on that uh, the day after, what, Tuesday or Wednesday? Or when, when did that come through? Um, well, we spoke... Um, yeah, he, he obviously wanted the blessing of the club. Well, we talked about uh, maybe some flexibility around the uh, the tour dates. Um, yeah, look, but, but in the end, um, I think he felt he needed to be there supporting his club, his employer, uh, about to head into a you know their season. So uh, we, we've accepted that and we've moved on. Um, Fortunately, you've got James O'Connor there, but it is pretty thin with Reese Hodge bowing out with the injury too. Um, so, Kirtley Bill, is, is things progressing there for him to come in? Yeah, well, Kirtley will come in. We were looking more at Kirtley as a you know, 15 who, who can play other spots. Uh, so we're going to bring Noah um, over. Um, you know, we, you know if, if we had Hodgie here, we would have resisted that. Um, to, to try and get the off-season program that we wanted in him, so we'll, we'll try and we'll try and do both with him here. Uh, but you know, he's played a lot of footy for us. He understands our structures. Uh, he can slot in seamlessly. Uh, he's been training, uh, so he's been training every day. Um, so his body's great, and um, he's keen as. So uh, we'll, we'll get him on the plane as soon as we can get um, you know the appropriate paperwork sorted. It's a bit of a perfect storm when you have Reese Hodge go down too. Um, unfortunately, covers so many positions. Um, had Quaid, had you known that Quaid would have pulled out earlier, do you think you might have initially bring up, brought over Noel Lolasio too, or, or did you think that Hodge was a was your second second or third choice ten? Uh, no, if we um, off Quaid, if we thought Quaid wasn't going to tour, Noel would have travelled. Outside of Kelly and Noah, is there anyone else in particular looking to build into the squad? As you said, a couple of days ago, you still thinking it was a little thin in certain positions? Yeah, obviously, um, we're down a midfielder and down a, um, a loose forward. Um, so, we're, look, we're working through things with the board. Um, as we've often talked about, we're, we're reluctant to bring guys over from Australia, especially ones that we've got a good program for. Uh, so we're trying to stick to that. Um, obviously, in Noah's case... Um, as you mentioned, Quay goes down, Reese goes down. Um, we've got three big tests to play, and uh, we're one injury away there from from real pressure. So, um, so yes, yeah, so we've made the decision to bring him in, but uh, we'll be at update over the next couple of days around any other further replacements. And so, like, uh, Duncan Payara in the squad during the t TRC. Is there a chance he comes back in as well, given his knows your systems? Yeah, look, he, he's he's one that we're uh, we're discussing. Dave, you, you seem quite disappointed that that, that Quay's not not joining uh, was jo staying with the other boys in in Japan. Um, do you? Any Any Maros said to me the other day that he felt the discussions weren't quite as honest as they could have been. Is that how you feel as the coach that um, the discussions weren't quite as honest as they could have been initially with those three boys? Um, and yeah, is that do you feel like those comments from Andy as well may make it a bit more difficult to pick Quaid and to pick Samo and pick Sean in the years uh, next year and in a World Cup year as well? Yeah, look, I, I guess that's there's uh, a bit of crystal ball gazing going on there. Um... Oh, look, all, all I say is, look, I spoke to all those boys when we were in, in the Gold Coast. Uh, they, they said they had concerns around uh, their club and how their club would feel about them travelling, um, you know, in, in November, close to the start of their season. Uh, but they all assured me they were keen to travel. And uh, and so for that reason, we got in negotiation with the club. Um, that they weren't, they weren't happy to be reg nine and for us to go in and just tell the clubs that were taking them. And so, you know, hence, hence the reason we had multiple Zoom meetings to, um, you know, try and sort through the problem and, and, um, and you yeah, know, took a bit of flexibility on both parties. But uh, in, in the end, um, you know, we have seen the results. So, yeah, look, we're really disappointed. But, 
yeah, our focus now is on who's here, not who's not. Moving forward, would you look at a model potentially with guy, key guys like Samu and, and Quaid, for example, that you say we want to use them in July? Like the, this is obviously in a reg nine period, but regardless, say we would like to use them in July, we would like to use them during the TRC, but spring tour, maybe you go a different direction, bring your younger guys and use it as more as a developmental time rather than picking your best 15 every week? Yeah, I, like, I, I haven't thought along those lines. As we know, the next... Um sort of autumn tour is um, only X amount of months out from the World Cup. Um, so, you know, there won't be a hell of a lot of experimenting going on there. Um, I, I think I mentioned earlier that, you know, from a Reg 9 perspective, you know, with the South Africans, with the Argentinians and others, uh, a lot of the island teams, uh, the European, UK clubs are, are used to dealing with that. Um, and so, you know, they sign those players on knowing that they could be taken away from a Reg 9 perspective and, and perhaps the Japanese clubs have taken these guys on uh, not expecting them to be away. So, um, you know, I, I, look, I'm not sure where, where things will head beyond this year. Obviously, there was a, this was a bit of a trial based on COVID, based on uh, a few other plans that we had to utilise more players from overseas. And I guess we'll have a look at the end of the tour and, and then get a plan around what that looks like uh, beyond this year. G'day, David. Justin here. Just in your conversations with Quaid, how apologetic was he about how the situation turned out? Oh, look, he's a look. He's a good man. Uh, he's, he's, you know, contributed massively on and off the field. Uh, look, look he, he's torn. You know, he um, he wants to be here. He wants to be a Wallaby, but he feels loyalty to his club, and um, you know, so in the end, he's made a decision that. He, he thinks he feels is the right one. He's made, made a decision that's best for him. and uh, So we've accepted that and, and we've moved on. I guess for a lot of um, Wallabies fans, they find it quite unusual that a player is more loyal to a club than to the Wallabies. Just as a, a coach, how does that sit with you? Um, oh, look, that's his primary employer, isn't it? So, oh, look, ideally, I, I, you know, we want guys who are desperate to be Wallabies and... Um, I know Quaid says he is, and uh, but he's torn, and and you know, if he, I think if he had the support of the club and the blessing of the club, he'd have come. Um, but um, but he hasn't. So, <laughs> sorry, Justin. That's all right. Just um, one one final one. So next time this sort of situation happens, are you reluctant to pick those guys again, knowing that this could potentially happen again? Um, well, look, as I said, we'll, uh, we've got a fair bit of leeway this year around picking players from overseas. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have discussions with the board. We'll, we'll work out what that looks like going forward. So, um, yeah, I, I, I can't answer it other than that. Sorry, Dave. Dave, Dave just to get... Thanks, Christy. Just to get some clarity around it, because there's been a lot of, you know, sourced um, backgrounding going on and, and the rest. And you've just said there that you spoke to the players and they wanted to come. They were they were concerned about how their clubs might feel about it. You went away and you negotiated with the clubs. So what, what was the upshot? Did the, the negotiations from what I can kind of see went well and they released them, but they're not coming. So is it back now on, you're saying it's Quaid's decision, you know, did the club... You, you know, do you feel like the clubs are maybe coercing the players to to not come? That they're telling you that they're free, but they're telling the players that they shouldn't. Or what, how's it kind of unfolded that way? Yeah, look, all I say is that the, um, the the players felt that the clubs wanted them to be there. That it was an important period. Uh, their experience, um, you know, with the group that they got heading into uh, their preseason, and so. Um, yeah, the, flat, the players felt compelled to, to stay. How, how tough has this been for you, like in your you know, long coaching career, this last six days, where does that kind of stack up? Oh, yeah, look, it's, it's just, uh, you know, like I say, I've been around a long time and um, there's lots of curveballs in this game. So uh, it just happens. You know, you get injuries, you, know, you move on. We've, um, yeah, we're disappointed because... 
Uh, certainly Samu and, and Quaid have been with us for quite a while and contributed really well and, and it would have been nice to have them here but, but they're not. And look, we've got, we've got a good squad here, we've got a really tight group. Um, so we'll prepare well for Scotland and, and this won't be a distraction, we'll just move on. Thanks. Do, do you feel the, re the relationship with all three players um, can be uh, salvageable um, and positive going forward? Oh, look, again, it's really going to depend on what our policies are going to be beyond this year for a start. Um, you know, we've obviously got some uh, boys based in France who are going to play in this series as well. And then we'll, we'll sit around with the board and we'll look about what the future looks like. So, so you know, it may be irrelevant um, based on uh, whatever the plans are going forward. And on the plus side, do you think, can, can it be actually a blessing in disguise that you, you get to use that second layer of players that perhaps you had been reluctant to over the last five games, which had earned your wins, but maybe not tested the depth of the full squad? Yeah, I mean, um, obviously Sami's not here, but he missed the last test anyway. Um, Sean's played 20 minutes of footy, so hasn't had a massive contribution on field. Obviously Quaid has. Uh, fortunate that we've now got Rabs back. Um, you know, he's he's been training for a month. Um and we know the quality that he brings. Um, I think Noah's learnt a lot over the last period. Uh, so we're excited to bring him. We get a chance to look at um, Kirtley in our group and and get an understanding how he would fit in from a cultural perspective and from a, a rugby perspective. And um, yeah, and then um, you have these other guys who may um, get an opportunity against Scotland, which is good for us. You know, we um, we're uh, we're keen to find out more about him. There's no better way than. Um, under pressure in front of massive crowds up here, be good. Just, just on Rabs, Dave, do you feel like he's had enough game time to get ready for three, potentially 70, 75 minute stints in a row? And does he, I know he's quite particular about how, he, how he prepares. Do you feel like he's feeling up to the task of starting three tests in a row? Yeah, well, he, uh, he's had a bit more foot even Quaid had when he played his first test. Um, so look, he's ready to go. Um, we trained yesterday. Uh, he looked really good. Um, he's running quicker than he has in the last two years. So he's worked really hard to get his body right. Um, and, and as you know, look, he's a, he's a good thinker of the game. He's really smart. Um, oh, it was good. It was good having him in the middle yesterday, driving things. So uh, we got a lot of confidence in him. And just on, uh, I'm not sure if it was who Nathan mentioned, but Harry Wilson um, was the decision to give him the full preseason. Was that made independent of Sean um, obviously being able to go at that stage? Would he have gone had Sean uh, pulled out before the tour began? No, nah, we're always going to leave Harry at home. Uh, and as we've talked about, um, we've got a lot of time for Harry. Uh, there's certain shifts that he needs to make physically, and being here and trying to do that is just about impossible. So. Um, so we're committed to, to leaving Harry at home to to um, make those shifts and give him the best opportunity to uh, push for a start uh, next year. And just confirming the guys join the squad, they'll all come in Sunday? Um, yeah, Sunday or, or Monday. So uh, both Rory, who plays for Toulouse, they're playing Racing, where he currently is, and they play Sunday night at 9 o'clock. Uh, some ungodly time over here. So um, by the time they finish, uh, that they won't be coming until Monday. Uh, we, we've got a Sunday game, so it's not disastrous. Any further hey, on the on the uh, selection policy moving forward? Like the, I'm sure the board will ask you, um, Scott Johnson, for feedback on what you think it should be. Has this changed? Last week changed what you think the policy or the, po the policy you would like to see implemented. Has that changed in your mind now compared to what you thought it should be seven days ago? Um, although I guess uh, you know, when we, when we first brought these boys back in, when we were in Australia, um, yeah, my thought process was that you know they'd, they'd be available for a Reg Nine tests. So when we weren't sure about Japan, um, assumed to be available for these three, and uh, yeah, probably what it highlights is that um, you know. Um, Discussing that sort of stuff with a club early on would have been important. Um, but, you know, look, in the end, we spent a lot of time doing that. Um, and as I said, I, I think, you know, 
12 months ago, they, they weren't thinking that these guys that um, they've got in their team, former internationals, would be unavailable uh, due to test footy. So, um, yeah, so look, I, you know, I'm not sure if we'd do things uh, drastically differently, but certainly my mindset was that the players were keen to play, um, you know, but they wanted the support of the club.